Hey guys, my name is Ben, and welcome back to episode 10 of our... Why is this up here? Anyway, <laughs> of our bucket plug-in tutorials, the episode 10 should not be here, and that's going to really irritate me. Anyway, <laughs> episode 10, we're going to be looking at inventory GUI. Oh my goodness, this is going to irritate me so badly. I'll fix it at some point. I'll think of a new naming system. Right, um, so we're going to be looking at creating an inventory GUI, uh, as is requested quite a lot. Um, so, the the way we're going to do this is we're going to use it as before with our inventory. And also, quickly in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, naming items and renaming items and stuff, because uh, that's a very quick thing to do. Uh, so, before we begin, we're going to delete everything in here, uh, apart from the custom inventory uh, that we've made and the player. And obviously, we need to return true at the bottom. So, we're going to rename this inventory our custom. We're just going to call it custom inventory uh, for now. And we have Control Shift O to organize our imports. So, we want to create a new method just to, to set a renamed item, uh, essentially, is what we're going to do. So, uh, we're going to make a, we're going to make it a private, uh, we're going to make a private item stack. So, it returns an item, uh, name item. And it's going to take in an item stack item, uh, and also a name, so string name, like so. Uh, remember to import item stack from org.bucket. So what this method is going to do is it's going to take in, we're going to put in an item, and then we're going to give it a name, and it will return the item with a name. So uh, the way we're going to do this is we need to first of all have this item. And we need to get something called the uh, the item meta or meta. I don't know how to say it. So item meta, and I'm going to call this item m. Well, I'm just going to call this, <laughs> I don't know, meta. And this is equal to item dot get, uh, dot get item meta or meta. Like so, and import this from org.bucket.inventory.meta or meta. It's going to really annoy me. I can call it meta. Um, meta data. <laughs> so anyway, now with this metadata we can do things so we can say this dot and add item flags and enchant we can do lots of things the one we want is set a display name and we're going to set the display name to whatever string has been passed in so name we then want to apply this new metadata to the item so the way we do that is we say item dot set uh, item dot set item meta I always just type like meta you want to set item meta to the meta that we've now redefined here because uh, it's got a new display name and then we want to return the item like so so this is just a very quick method uh, with how to rename an item to something custom like having custom um, item names uh, which is what we're going to want to do for our custom inventory so first of all now we've created this custom inventory what we're going to do is we're going to have an item in this custom inventory that is going to uh, what am I saying here? That's going to teleport us to spawn. That's what it's going to do. That's why I've just decided right now. <laughs> um, and what we want to do is we want to have an item. Let's have it say a compass. So when they open up this inventory, when they do slash equip, which we're going to change again. So if we go into uh, say, well, let's just leave it because uh, this is just for you know practical showing you purposes. So when they do slash equip, it's going to open up an inventory and it's going to have actually you know what I'm going to change the name uh, we're going to call this class so we're going to right click on this hit refractor rename and call it menu we then want to go into our plugin.yml and we've done this before and we want to change equip to menu and rename the description to opens the plugin menu like so refresh right click refresh or f5 um, so now in here we want to make a new item, <coughs> pardon me, we want to make a new item uh, called like uh, teleport to spawn, uh, but it's going to be a compass. So we need to make a new item stack, so item stack, uh, spawn item, and this is going to be equal to uh, name item, remember, because we're using our method that we've made, and this takes in the item stack, so if we create a new item stack, and we have the material dot, material dot, I can't can't type material dot compass and the name is going to be let's make it aqua so chat color dot aqua and we're going to say teleport to spawn like so 
Now you see this is quite um, large here with this whole we're making a new item stack inside of an item stack. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually make two methods that do the same thing. But in the second method, instead of having item stack item, we're going to have material item. Material item. So now, because we have two of the same, uh, I actually cannot type material. Not real, like so. Because we have two of the same thing, but this one has material, so it's easier to use. We would only use this method if we wanted like uh, multiple items in an item stack. So what we're going to do is this method here is going to return the other method. So we're, we're, this is like recursion kind of. <laughs> um, so we're calling the, the method with the same name, but it's not the same method. So we're going to return this method and we're going to make a new item stack. Uh, and in the item stack is going to be the material item and is going to have the name name. So I hope that kind of makes sense. We're using this method inside this method to make this, I don't know what the word is, less large and, and annoying. So instead of having to make a new item stack each time, that's done inside of this method, which runs this method. So instead of just typing, you know, new item stack, we can just type material dot compass because that is a method. We've made that method now uh, here. And that's going to teleport them to spawn here, semicolon at the end. So we've made our our spawn item that they're going to click. So now we need to add this item to the inventory, and I'd like it to be central. Uh, so the central point of uh, nine is one, nine, two, eight, three, uh, seven, four, six, five. So on the fifth slot in the inventory, uh, we're going to say so inventory uh, dot set item. Now the first integer is the slot that it's going to go into, so it's going to be in the fourth slot, because remember zero counts as a slot, uh, I think we'll check on that when we get into the game, and we're going to add the item spawn item, like so. So that is how that works, but now what we need to do is we need to, actually before we do that, we need to set the, so we need to say player dot open inventory, uh, inventory. So now what we need to do is we need to actually have a method that, or a, a listener that checks for when the player will um, click in the inventory. So we're going to make a actually new package inside our event, which is going to handle any inventory things. So dot inventory and create a new class. We're going to call this inventory click, inventory click. And it's going to add an interface listener like so, so hit okay finish. So we now have this inventory package which contains the inventory click uh, listener. So we need to make a at event handler and we need to say public void on player or not on player just on inventory inventory click and the event is called inventory click event like so and we'll name this event. So we, this inventory click event, inventory click event cannot be resolved to a type. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Inventory, let's click it this, in, inventory click event. That worked, okay. <laughs> there we go. So, now what we need to do is we need to, because this, this happens like for anything. Uh, whenever anyone clicks in any inventory at all, this method is going to be run. So we need to work out when it is clicked in our inventory. So how do we do that? We check the name of the inventory. So our inventory is called custom inventory. Um, so what we now need to do is we need to go into our inventory click. We need to, first of all, find out who is clicked. So we type player player equals event dot get who clicked. Uh, and this is classed as a human entity uh, type, but it's still a player. It's a very, it's a safe cast. So we can type player brackets uh, event dot get who clicked. If you want to be super safe, we can say if event dot get who clicked instance of player, uh, and then hit an exclamation mark at the front, surround everything else in brackets, and type return at the end. What this does is it checks is the person who clicked a player. So are they an instance of the player? If they are not an instance of the player, we're going to return out of this method and continue no further. So this is a very, very safe cast because it's safe anyway, but we're just double checking here uh, to avoid any errors. 
So we now need to get the uh, the inventory. So we can say inventory uh, inv equals event dot get inventory. So this is the inventory that was clicked. I cannot spell inventory <laughs> inv. Uh, so that's that. We now need to check the name of the inventory. So actually, what we're going to do is we're going to hit this up first. So we're going to say uh, if inv dot uh, get title dot equals ignore case custom inventory so does it equal ignore case custom inventory actually that's less safe we're going to say does the get title dot equal and then if we go into inventory and we copy it just to make sure we have no errors whatsoever and then in our string parameter we put custom inventory so if the inventory title is not equal to custom inventory with the exclamation mark at the front then we're going to return out the method again return so we now have the inventory um, and you'll see now only after this do we get the player so um, it just saves a little bit of what's the word it saves a bit of uh, I don't know it doesn't strain the server as much uh, we can actually also put this at the top here so it would strain the server even less uh, because most of the, or like all the time this is going to be true uh, but not all the time this is going to be true so we'll run this and check if it's custom inventory if it's not a custom inventory if it's not the custom inventory we want we're going to return if it's not a player we're going to return so now we want to get the item that they have clicked so we want to so we're definitely now in the inventory so there's only a certain few items that can be clicked uh, and I think what we're going to do for this one is we're going to make it relatively simple and we're just going to use if statements in the future as we you know continue to develop our plugin here uh, we're going to be using things called enumerators and stuff like that to check what's in the inventory but for now just to keep it simple uh, we're going to get the item that they have clicked and the way we do this is we type uh, item stack uh, we're going to call it item and this is equal to event dot get or dot get current item so that is the item that they have they're currently holding and import uh, inventory or item stack obviously the item they're currently holding because they've clicked so they're now holding an item uh, so we're going to get the item that they're currently holding so now we want to check what this item is we're going to use an if statement so if item dot uh, get type uh, double equal sign material dot compass then we're going to expand this open so if the item is a compass and it has to be our custom compass because we're in the custom inventory then we're going to say player dot teleport to player dot get world dot get spawn location like so so that's going to teleport them to the spawn and then we'll say player dot send message you have been teleported to spawn however now they still have this like compass in their inventory um, and they also still have the their inventory open so we need to a close the inventory and b remove the item from their cursor so that they don't take the compass so the way we do this is we need to cancel this event this event they, that we need to say that they haven't they cannot um, touch the compass so we need to say event dot set cancel true so they no longer have the compass in their hand but also player dot close inventory. So whatever inventory they have open, which they definitely do, because they're in an inventory clicking something, we are closing it. We can also make it super safe again, or we could put say if player. There's a method called if player dot has. Um, oh, I don't even know what it is. Anyway, anyway ignore me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, they're definitely in an inventory, and we're closing it. Uh, so we're going to cancel it, and we're going to close their inventory like so. And they've been teleported to spawn. So all is good in the world here. Uh, everything has been completed successfully. And maybe we'll even play some particles. So we'll say player uh, dot uh, get location uh, dot get. Oh, we can just say player dot get world. Player dot get world dot play effect. Um, and we'll say at the player's location. So dot play effect. Uh, it's just something, you know, a bit random. Uh, player dot get location uh, effect dot uh, let's have a I don't know a blaze shoot this is a 
one way of playing effects. We'll get into other ways, and we'll just put a one at the end here. It's more direction. Uh, okay, so, and finally now we want to say if it wasn't a compass, so otherwise, if what they else, if the item they clicked wasn't a compass, if it was air, we're going to do the same here. So we're going to um, set cancelled and close inventory. So now, if you see here, the, the these two lines of code are in both our if and our else statements. So what we can do is we can remove them from here. We can remove them from here. We can paste them outside. So no matter what, the event will be set cancelled and the player's inventory will be closed. The last thing to do is to go into our main class, go to register events, um, and say pm dot register events into a new inventory click and this class. Format it, export, make sure we refresh, next, finish, and I'll see you in the game. All right, so we're in the game. Uh, so now the command was slash menu. So if we do slash menu, uh, where did, I have an error at line 40 because, um, ah, that's right, equip. We need to change this to menu. My bad. So if we export this again uh, and reload, you probably noticed that before I did. Uh, now if we do slash menu, you see it opens up. The compass is in the middle. I did it right. There we go. <laughs> so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is how you've got to think of it. Uh, teleport to spawn. If we click teleport to spawn, it's going to teleport us to spawn. Our spawn point appears to be... I can only break grass. <laughs> Our spawn point appears to be 24, 64, 136. But you see it made the, uh, the blaze sound. Yeah, we'll do it again. Slash menu. Uh, and then we had it. We had the uh, the blaze. I don't know what it was called. The blaze shoot sound when we got to spawn, and you've been teleported to spawn. That is our spawn location. We can check that in our server dot properties, I believe. Maybe notepad. Or oh, no, we can't. Never mind. Ignore me. I've been saying a lot of random things today that didn't really make any sense. So uh, I apologise if I teleport myself up. Um, Let's just go to. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I've been, I said a lot of random stuff today that, that didn't really make sense. Uh, I hope you followed. If you've got any questions, remember to comment them below. Uh, next tutorial, we will. I don't know what we'll be doing. We will find out what we're going to be doing. But, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next.